starting with the man that simply was described as you punt, you die. You die. James yeah. Die Woo! in Studio B. James, welcome, man. Hey, it's glad to be here. I got to turn up. Hold on. I got to turn my energy you up. Turn you guys up? got some hey, energy. Let's Come go, on, Jay. All right. I got to I turn, <laughs> my, uh, turn my energy up here just a little bit to hang out with you youngsters. Your guns look a lot better than mine, too. Yeah, yeah. My, don't look at my gut, though. <laughs> <laughs> what was your jam in 1996? What were you listening to in 96, James? Oh, man. 1996, let's see. Tupac, <laughs> Biggie. <laughs> Tony Braxton. No, don't Tony Braxton. Tony Braxton. <laughs> yes. Be- that was Unbreak Be- my heart. Beethoven. See, I'd taken Get a cl- hey, I'd- well-rounded athletes, okay? <laughs> I'd taken a music appreciation course, mm-hmm. and I fell in love with Johann Sebastian Bach and Beethoven. And Ludwig yes. van Beethoven. So you got your disc man in LaBelle Edwards. Oh, no, hold on. I'm not Uncle Rico. I don't have a <laughs> disc. <laughs> I'm not the guy from Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But... Um, you know, Lord. something like that. Yeah, I'm not Star Lord. Not cool <laughs> enough to be Star Lord, but uh, you know, we all had different theme songs. I know Tim was uh, Hail Mary. Uh, Tim McTire was Hail Mary by uh, Tupac, and uh, we all kind of had different things. And y- y- it's funny you guys mentioned earlier what was the songs of the season at that, that particular time. And so my old brain is now trying to <laughs> trying to take the take the old Ram there. I could just hear it click, and I'm trying to think about what the songs were then. I don't even was it Hip Hop Hooray. I can't remember well, if it was naughty by right? nature, Pop but yeah. I, I mean, but you know, it was it was a, a special time, and so it was everything was just jamming. I mean, Tupac had us had a couple songs. Biggie hit with with uh, Puffy, Biggie, 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 <laughs> can't you see? I mean, so <laughs> we, we go. <laughs> going back to Cali, you know, all, all of us Cali boys like that one there. So, um, but those are just some of the songs, and probably as we go through the show, I'll start remembering or recalling some things. I might have to tweet some things to you guys. <laughs> there, you go. Okay. there you go. You can always do that. <laughs> yeah. And we're gonna spend the next hour just talking about this '96 team. So. To, to set that up, give us an idea of the way the 95 season ended and how that set up the 96 season. Well, it, and, and I'm glad that you let in with that. In order to understand how important and how special the 96 season was, you had to understand what we went through in 95. Um, a subpar season, the first year in 20-something-odd years that we hadn't um, – we'd missed a bowl game. It was the first time that we'd missed it. And so there was a somber mood. Um, there was a 34-31, 34-31, and then I think this third game against Utah at the end of the season got beat 34-17 in our own house on on national TV in all blue. Mm. So I think we were 21 or 22 in the nation with an opportunity to sew up a bowl – uh, trip to um, ho- the Holiday Bowl, which prior seasons we had been locked in if we w- if you were a conference champion. I think we had a three-way tie or two-way tie that mm-hmm. that, that year, and so we ended up getting rings but no bowl appearance. So it was a uh, you know it was mud in your eyes. You know somebody poured a little too much salt, and not grab enough sugar. You know in, in in whatever you know in your drink or your Kool Aid or whatever. But yeah, seven uh, and fourteen didn't go to a bowl. No eight was it seven and four eight and four? I can't remember. No, we didn't go, but we got rings. But it was seven and four. We, we, we it was a very sour taste. It was a sour taste for me particularly because I had transferred from B or from Utah State and came over to BYU set out and so this was the year I was going to finally beat uh, Utah. See, I had beaten BYU when I was at Utah State. Oh, in 93. You were in the yeah. epic 93 game. Yeah, 58-56 and so this was a chance to finally beat uh, Utah, we got cheated out of the win against Utah that year. I won't go into that, <laughs> and so this was an opportunity to do it and to have all of these, you know, to be a part of the BYU uh, allure of, you know, always ranked, always on the national stage, you know, going to a ball game. So it was all of these things, and that just it just showed me that nothing was promised and nothing is given, but everything is earned. And so that was the sentiment when we, at the conclusion of that season, sitting at home watching everybody else playing bowls, not really experiencing experiencing that and realizing that the only way to fix that was to go out and recruit, to host guys and to help them understand and to prepare them for the the mission that they were going to come serve here with us. So you're coming, <laughs> we're going to war, and we are undoing the sins of the past. So <laughs> <laughs> so, so you bring in some of these guys that you're talking about. Yeah, um, we got Omar Morgan, Chris Ellison, 
Um, we have um, Brian McKenzie and Ronnie Brian Jenkins. Brian McKenzie, Art, Ronnie Brand Jenkins, uh, K.O. Keala Louie. Um, we have uh, Ethan Potchman, which people don't understand, but he made us very effective because now we are a four down team. A good kicker is such a weapon. Four downs. Yeah, you're not a three and out. We are four. He kicked a 51 yard field goal in that uh, WAC championship. That makes us very dangerous because we can score from 40 to 50 yards out. And Kicking game wins games. I know you guys have heard that, and we were very sound. Um, we were sound in the kicking game my junior year, even at 7-4, and four, but we were not complete as a team. So, um, uh, segueing into the, 90, into the 95 season, we got all these guys coming. We got margin hooks. We got um, um, Will Snowden coming from Colorado. We have a lot of talent coming. We have a lot of speed coming. We have the Blitzkrieg coming. And obviously you guys uh, can see from the historical context how, how it worked out, but uh, lots of fun. It was lots of fun. And, I, and I'd like to believe the only person losing sleep during that season was Chow because he didn't know how to use everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't keep everybody happy. Hey, that, a wanton insomniac, right? <laughs> <laughs> Too many weapons. James Dye with us on BYU Sports Nation reminiscing about the 1996 BYU football season. 14 wins, one loss. Cotton Bowl champions finished ranked fifth in the country. It's well documented what this team accomplished, and it was special to say the least. But do you have a favorite moment? Is there one moment from that season where you're like, I will never forget that? That just sticks out. It, w there was so many moments. You know, it's it's hard to pick one particular moment. Um, moments go like this. I mean, you have. Uh, Ben Cook, you have Lane Hale, you have Jason Walker. You see guys now starting to get in the mix, getting picks. You know, Jason Walker's got a pick, uh, even though we lose to Washington, he shows up. You got Ben Cook showing up. You got Lane Hale showing up. The moments are your teammates all showing up to play. You know, band of brothers, I got your back. You got guys week in and week out. Somebody's stepping up. Somebody's stepping up, and it was just those poignant moments where somebody's stepping up. Um, the team was selfless. We all just work together, and you got different people, different beliefs, but all one common core, and that's to protect the house. And that's even before uh, Under Armour had protect this house, we were protecting the house and the legacy. <laughs> and um, and so those are moments. Um, whether it was on the sideline against Arkansas State, I guess if I had to pick one, we were sitting on the sideline talking, and um, I got hit in the knee uh, earlier, a couple of uh, plays. And uh, guys from Arkansas State were just jacking, jaw jacking, just talking, just talking. And some of the guys heard them talking. And so it was a third down, third and seven or something like that. I can't remember. But I remember Omar and Tim and them saying something about taking one back. I can't remember who it was. And I and I just looked at him and said, I'll be right back. I'm going to take this one to the house. I'll come back. And uh, kick, they kicked it to me, and I ran it back. And unfortunately, we had it called back. Oh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> And, Come on! and so just just moments like that. I mean, there's some other uh, moments that I care not to share on air. That, <laughs> we'll talk, we'll talk after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll, <laughs> to be continued, right? Did you feel like every time you ran on the field for special teams, like, I'm, I might take this to the house? You know, I, I wouldn't say I felt like I, like I, like I said to myself, I'm going to take it to the house. But I felt like if we got the right pieces in place, if there was a block made, that some big things can happen. I always knew that there was a certainty if we get the pieces, the correct pieces to fall in line and in place, that we were going to take it to the house. And it was just a confidence in knowing that I was going to do my part. But the one thing that the players started to believe in is when the coaches started saying, if you do this, we will take it back. So it wasn't me sitting there saying, I'm going to do this. It was the coaching staff that was saying, to get this block, pick this guy up, and we're all going to celebrate. So it wasn't just me celebrating. We would be in those, those special team meetings uh, celebrating together because we all did it together. Everybody was anticipating. You know, there was one punt against Wyoming, the 90-yarder that I had on a punt safe. And um, – there was the defense left in, and they asked me, do you want to leave the defense in? Yeah, let's leave them in. And I think I can't remember who was like, we block just as good as anybody else. <laughs> oh, excuse me. So they left the defense in, and uh, coach was like, do not catch that ball inside the 10. 
um, and I caught it right at the 10 and made a couple of moves. I made a couple of guys miss, spin around, and, and I was running down the field with the Ross brothers. And I'm like, you guys, let's go. <laughs> let's go. And, and you guys know San and John, the yeah. big bowling ball calves. Yes. The big boys are moving. And I'm like, let's go because they're on my heels. <laughs> but um, that was just a fun time being on the field with the defense. You know what I mean? Like, boys, let's go do something. Let, let's go score some points on the defensive side, too. So that was, that was a fun opportunity. Celebrate being the key word today as we reminisce about 1996 BYU football. James Dye with us. Thank you for all you have done for BYU football, man. Hey. We need you to sign our BYU Sports Nation stretch wide flag, if you don't mind. All right. Yeah, go ahead. You punt, you die. Feel free to write that up there, too. <laughs>